All right, uh, small block Chevy 400. I think this is part three, crank shaft installation. I did a few things, a few steps ahead already than I normally I would show you in a video, but it's, I don't want to drag the video out and bore you. So I already put the remain seal in staggered it this end is up a little bit I lubed it I put uh, the main bearings in first I clean this one I left out to show you I clean the saddle then I clean both sides of the bearing it's just something that I do uh, then I stagger them in there you know put the bearing with the end on it going down which I'll show you those of you that don't this is the part that's got the groove in it. Uh, and this is the other bearing that comes in there. It's got no groove in it. The groove one always goes in a block. Cleaning the bearing, meaning I clean this side, then I clean this side, and then I double check the size. Only once, once have I had one bearing that was the wrong size in the kit. Over 25 years, I've never had that problem. I lubed the, hopefully you can see that yet, it's just simple, it's a 30 or 40 weight oil. I always, I also fill these holes up with about 10 pumps, 10 pumps of the oil can, doesn't hurt, all it does is build up in here and just sit there so when this thing starts up, because most of the people nowadays don't prime their engines before they start them, I try and, what I started doing is priming them on the stand. If I do a complete before it goes out, like uh, this guy here, it's an aluminum head uh, 350. Since that was a long block, I primed it so it's because I don't know when he's going to put it in. If it's going to sit. Plus, you know, I'm not too fond of priming it while cranking it. You know, because then if the thing fires and the oil's not in there, you know, you're in for trouble. So, got that ready. This here is the crank, just cash crank, cut 1010. I cleaned all the journals. I also use, what I like to use is this little brush. I shove it in, up all the holes. Then I visually look in every hole, make sure there's nothing in there. And then I wipe all the journals. And since this was balanced, I clean out all the holes because the uh, balancing people just lube it up, balance it, and then throw it in a bag and hand it to you all dirty. At least that's what my guys do. It's hard to find a good crank cutter, but they're far and few in between now. So I double checked all the journals on the crank. And after you lube up the bearing saddles in the rear main seal, Crank is ready to go in. I don't like to spin it when it's in here right now. I'm just going to give it a little. It feels really well, really, really good. What I like to do is shoot some oil down the journal hole and all these. Just squirt oil on the crank journal mains. On the back one, pay attention to the uh, thrust areas, put a little extra oil in there, which I also will on the cap, and a little oil on the seal area. Also like to put a little bit of sealer, hopefully you can, you know what, I'll take you over here. On the rear main cap in this area here. That's one dab, just some Permatex. And I'll dab this side.
under the rear cap. That way there's no leaks. Just wiping my glove off from the sealer. Now we'll put the caps on. Start with the front. Of course you want to line up the little tabs with the tabs on the bottom half. Oil it up the same way. Actually, uh, I like to put a little assembly lube. Just a little squirt on all the main journals. Doesn't hurt. Everybody has their own way. I've never had a problem. So this is the way I do it. You match the tangs up, I'll call it. There's also an arrow on the cap, on the main cap, pointing forward. So, unless you're not paying attention, it's pretty easy not to screw this up. Also, these caps are numbered. Let's see if I can show you on this number three cap. Right there. There's a little number there. It's from the previous person that took it apart and had the line hole. This is a special rear main seal. Since the 400 block was line honed, it takes material out of the seal area. It's not like a 350, so it is a different special rear main seal. I also staggered. Let me see how I could show you that. See how this part is a little bit further down, and this one is sticking up. I also match that to the one in the back of the block. It's opposite. So there's just like a little extra spot. Extra seal just to prevent prevent leaking. Use a little brush here with a little assembly lube on that rear main. Because I don't know when he's gonna start this thing. Obviously you don't want to put it in there dry. So I oil it up. Alright. Since these are the ARP studs, I'm putting my washers on first. If you didn't have studs, then you would just, uh, what I would do is oil my main bolt threads and then thread it in. And you want to snug them all. Because you have to set the check and set the thrust as well. Now make sure these about five, six threads, make sure they're going on. I usually don't uh, do this next. Once I get these nuts on, I'm going to spin these down. I'll show you. I usually don't do this, uh, but it is cold here and it's about 40 degrees. I got my heater on, but it's not working that well. So I'm going to spin them down with this. I don't recommend this. That's just a Speed it up a little. This is not an impact. And I backed it off on the, the torque. So it will not go down real hard. This is just to speed it up. So I don't bore you. And actually that one I can't... Uh, it's an impact socket so it won't fit in between the 
the journals of them. So I'm going to make sure these are snug. You see how many turns it's still going? That's because the drill wasn't set to torque down or anything. So they're not that tight. I have to go grab a uh, different socket. Let me pause this. All right. Then I switch my... Grab a regular socket instead of an impact. It's thinner, so it fits on here. Then I'll check that. Oh no, I can't use that one. Yeah. I'll use this one. So you know what? I might as well use that socket for all of it. Okay. You want to tap this? I can't find my 8 pound sludge, my little mini sludge, so I'm going to use this. I got to check it anyways. I hope you can see that. I'm going to take these to 30 right now. No, that's not the torque. I'm just going to take them to 30 foot pounds. These are studs, so it's different than regular main bolts would be would be less than what I'm going to torque these to. We're not running a windage tray or anything, which is why there's no studs sticking up here or anything like that. These are ARPs, and I know for a fact I looked up these are. They want these at 80, 80 foot pounds. So glad my eyesight is fading. So I got my cheaters. Alright, we're at 80. There's no order for this. I like to start in the center. Work my way out. See nice balance holes, nice job they did. This is going to be a 5.7 rod, 400 small block, not the 5.565 short rod. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Nice spin. Let me pause for a minute. Next, what you're want to, going to want to do is hook up your dial indicator zero it out. You're going to want to check the back and forth, the thrust. I'm not going to show on that video. There's plenty of videos out there that do that. This is a somewhat of a stock rebuild. Uh, you know, it's got a hydraulic roller cam. It's going to have aluminum heads. You'll see later. Uh, I got to take those apart because you can't just bolt those on. So I'll show you all that stuff. Usually what I find inside, I'll show you later. And, uh, you don't have to check this. I mean, the crank spins nice. It's not a super duper blueprint job or anything. Uh, but I'm going to check this next, and uh, from there we'll go on to the pistons and the rods. So I think I believe this is part three, crank installation.